This is How to Read Braille. We'll use everything we have learned so far to read the following passage. We'll read slowly in the beginning and then speed up as we go through. If you have a hard time understanding this video, you may want to spend some time watching the previous videos in this series and then come back and try this one again. Also, feel free to pause the video now before we get started and try to read as much as you can on your own. So let's begin. The first cell at the top left is one you'll frequently find at the beginning of passages. It simply has dot 6 raised, so it does not fit the pattern of dots of letters A through J. If you'll remember, this is our capital sign. Since there is only one, it means we are only going to capitalize the first letter in our word, not the whole word. The next cell is just dot 1 raised. This dot fits into the pattern of cells A through J, because if you'll remember from our story about crossing the river, this was the very first one, approach. So this is the A cell. Next we have two identical cells in a row. Do the top four dots in these cells fit the pattern of dots of any of the letters A through J? Well, in our story about crossing the river, these cells look like the bridge symbol, which represents the B cell. But these cells also have dot three raised. That means that these cells represent one of the letters or contractions that were in the B column on our grid of cells. But how do we remember the cells in that column? Well, we can think back to our other story about walking home from school. We started that story by seeing our baby brother and saying, a coochie coochie coo. And then we walked past that scary house and asked our dad, believe ghosts be? That statement helps us remember the cells in the B column, which were B, L, V, G, H, and B, E. Since the cells here also have dot 3 raised, then they must be on the second row. So then these cells must represent the letter L. Alright, now we have our first word in the passage, the word all. Next we have a cell that looks like the A cell we saw earlier, but also has dot 6 raised. In our story about walking home from school, the A column was a coochie coochie coo, which translates to A, K, U, C, H, and E, A. So out of those cells, the K also has dot 3 raised, the U also has dots 3 and 6 raised, and the C, H just has dot 6 raised. So this cell must be the C, H cell, since it also has dot 6 raised. Next is a cell where the top four dots look like the detour sign from our first story about crossing the river, so this cell must be in the D column. It has dot three raised, so the D in our second story about walking home from school was deny this discover, which translates to D N Y this dis. So since this cell also has dot three raised, it must be an N. The last cell in this word is just dot two raised, so that reminds us of the A cell, but it has been dropped down one position. So the cells in the A column again are A, K, U, C, H, and E, A. That last one is the one that was dropped down, so this cell must represent the letters E, A. But if we remember from our rules of writing Braille, the E, A cell cannot be used at the beginning or end of a word. So that means this cell must have a different meaning. The cells that only use the lower four dots are usually used as punctuation marks as well. Thinking back to the video about punctuation marks, we'll remember that this punctuation mark goes along with the akuchi kuchi ku, since commas separate those words. So this cell must then represent the comma. Well now wait, the first two cells in this word, ch and n, don't make much sense. However, in situations like this, the letters will often represent an abbreviated word. And we could look up what abbreviated word these letters represent, but we can also probably just figure it out ourselves fairly easily. So it's probably not the word chin or the word chain. What's a commonly used word that starts with CH and includes the letter N? Maybe it's children. Well, let's put that down and then come back and change it later if it doesn't make sense. So, if we have read it correctly so far, our passage starts with all children, comma, 
All right, so the next cell looks like it's a gauge pointing towards empty, so this must be the E cell. Next is a cell where the top two dots look like the closed sign from our first story, so that cell must be in the C column. That column in our second story about walking home from school was Comics Show at the Convention Center. So the cells in that column are C, M, X, S, H, and C, O, N. Now this cell also has dots 3 and 6 raised, so therefore it must be the X. The next cell also looks like the closed sign from our first story, but doesn't have any additional dots raised, so this must be the letter C. The next cell is like the first one in this word, so it is also an E. The top four dots in the cell after that look like the fuel sign from our first story, and the F column in our second story was finish your paper and edit it too. So in the F column are cells F, P, and ed2. So that must be the p since dot 3 is also raised. The final cell in this word looks like the jump symbol from our first story and so the j column in our second story was jt with will w was by so this must be a t. Now we'll begin to pick up the pace just a little bit. The next cell has just dot 5 raised so that does not fit into the pattern of raised dots in cells A through J. It looks like one of the cells that fell on the bottom row with the three groups of three cells. Those numbers we memorized for those cells were 364, 435, and 546. Since this cell only has dot 5 raised, it must be in that final group, 546. And that was the group of cells that was used in the two cell whole word contractions. So we'll have to figure out which contraction this is based upon the next cell. That next cell looks like the E, but also has dot 3 raised. So the E column in our second story was Ozzy Oz Win, or E, O, Z, W, H, and E, N. So therefore this cell must represent the letter O. Okay, so which of our two cell whole word contractions started with the O? Well, that part of our memory aid was one ought to get part of the question right. So then this must be the two cell whole word contraction for the word one. Excellent. Next is another comma like we saw after the word children, which by the way looks like it was correct. All children except one. And so the next cell looks like the gridlock symbol from our first story, so it must be a G. Next is a cell that looks like the Harley Rider from our first story, but also has dot 3 raised. And the H in our second story was hop right off outside his house, or H R of out his. So this cell must be the R. The last cell in this word looks like the ignition switch from our first story, so it is in the I column, which in our second story was, is the owl in, or I, S, the, owl, in. So the owl, or O-W, was the cell which also had dot six raised. So then altogether this is the word grow. Next is a cell that looks like the A, but also has dots three and six raised. The A column in our second story was a, K, U, C, H, and E, A. So this is the letter U. Next is something that looks like the F cell, but with dot 3 raised. The F column in our second story was finish your paper and edit it too, or F, P, and ed too. So this is the P cell. Finally is a cell that looks like someone is pointing straight down, as if to say, the sentence ends right here. So this cell must be the period. We'll begin to pick up the pace even more now. The next sentence should begin with a capital sign, which it does, followed by a cell in the I column, which was is the owl in, so that's the word the. Next is a cell in the D column, which was D, N, Y, this, this, so that must be a Y. So altogether that's the word they. This is a good example, by the way, of the whole word contraction the being used as a part of a larger word instead of just by itself. The next word starts with an S because it's the second cell in the I column, followed by an O and another O, which are the second cells in the E column. Then comes the second cell in the D column, which is the letter N. 
So this sentence begins, they soon. The next word is another two-cell whole word contraction, since it starts with the cell that only has dot five raised. The second cell is the K, because it's the second cell down in the A column. So that part of our two-cell whole word contraction memory aid was, my father is here, and he knows the Lord and Mother Mary's name. So this must be the word no. Excellent. See, this will take some practice, but over time, it will come to you more and more quickly. Next is the T-cell all by itself. So let's think back to our memory aid related to the words represented by Braille letters. Not quite, but rather, you and I can have more knowledge so that, well, there we go. The T-cell by itself represents the word that. Next is the word they, again, like we saw at the beginning of the sentence, followed by a cell in the J column, so JT with Will W was by, so with dot six raised, this must be the W cell, which by itself is the word will. Next are the same words we saw at the end of the line above, grow and up, except this time they're followed by a comma. Next, we see one of the other rules for writing Braille come into play, as this is the word and, followed without a space by the word the. Next is a W, followed by an A, and then a Y. Next is a capital sign, which is in the middle of our sentence, so we must be about to read the name of someone or something. So after the capital sign, a W, followed by an E cell dropped down, so that must be the EN cell. And then the detour sign, so that's a D, and then a Y, so it's the name Wendy. Then there's K, N, E, W, and then the J cell dropped down, and the J column again was J, T with Will, W, was, by, so that must be the word was or by. And if we'll remember from our rules for writing Braille, when this cell has a space after it, then it represents the word was. Next is TH, followed by a period, and the TH, when used by itself, represents the word this. So now we've read a couple of sentences so far. Let's finish out the last part of this passage by reading word by word instead of cell by cell. So next is a capitalized two-cell whole word contraction that starts with the letter O. And in fact, we saw the same contraction earlier, so this is the word one. On the next line is another two-cell whole word contraction, but this one starts with the letter D. So let's see, character day ever, so this must be the word day. Then it's when she was two years old, she was playing and that's the first time we've seen the ING symbol, which fits with the 346 group on our bottom row. And we can remember that group by the memory aid upcoming. Next is the I cell drop down, so that's the word in, followed by A, garden, and she plucked another flower and ran with, and then it's the letter X by itself, which represents the word it, to, and then followed unspaced by the word her, and then another whole word contraction starting with the letter M, and that part of our memory aid was father, hear, no, lord, mother, name, so that's the word mother and then a period. And we're finished. Great job. I know it felt like a lot of work, and it is in the beginning, but in the end, learning Braille is a lot of fun, and you'll get it. Now, you may have already recognized that these are the first three sentences of the book, Peter Pan. Well, now it's your turn to try the next sentence from that book on your own. If you get stuck, just reference one of the cheat sheets from the previous videos to help you along. Don't worry if it takes a little longer than you expect to begin reading more than one cell at a time. Braille is a skill, and like any other skill, it requires practice to master. One great way to practice learning Braille is to download a book from an online Braille library and try reading it on your own. 
These books usually come as text files, which you can then convert into Braille characters, like I have done here, by downloading a Braille font that you can use in a word processing program like Microsoft Word. All you have to do is download and install the Braille font, open the text file in Microsoft Word, select All, and then change the font to Braille. You can find links to all these resources with this video. Good luck in your Braille journey, and may you be richly blessed by the Lord. This has been How to Read Braille.